Now I have most of my designs already laid out, but I'm exploring a few different directions still. So I started off this entire project with this mini mood board. So I have a few different screenshots of some things that I was really inspired by. We have you know, some fun drawn characters, some hand lettered fonts, and some more traditional fonts as well. So taking a look at this, again, this is just a screenshot, so there's absolutely no vector in this. I wanted to figure out exactly what font was used to create this word virtual. Now, in order to do this, I could bring this over to the web, right? I could throw that in, maybe I'll get a font or two back, I'll bring that in Illustrator, maybe I have that font, maybe I don't. I really just want Illustrator to tell me what font this is, and if I don't have it, recommend something similar. Well, that's exactly what the brand new retype feature does. So this just analyzed my photo and really quickly found the exact font and also recommend some similar suggestions. <laughs> Amazing, so I'll go ahead and I'll use this in my design right away. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this and it's really, really easy. But this is not all. What I really love is I have another font in mind that I used in a previous design. So I'm gonna head over to my CC libraries and here's this California text that I used. So I'm gonna head down to my type system, and here's that California text. Let me just zoom in on that. But here's the problem. It's completely outlined, and I worked on this project over a year ago, so I don't remember exactly what font was used, but the great thing is, with the retype feature, not only can I just quickly identify this text, but I can actually convert this back into editable text. Yes, <laughs> this is super, super cool. I, this was not editable two seconds ago, and now it is type again. So I love this. This is the brand new retype feature. It just makes it really easy when it comes to identifying and converting fonts. All right, so I have my type system. It's all built out. I have some hand lettering here, our cute little boba drinking bear over here. Uh, but I also have this flavor list we've been creating. So we have our matcha tea, our brown sugar, a lot of these different flavor of the weeks. And I still have one that I need to color here at the bottom. So let's take a look. Now, I could go in, right, click around, fuss with the colors, figure out exactly what yellows or oranges make up passion fruit mango, which, fun fact, I just saw passion fruit backstage for the very first time in real life. Uh, so I now know what color it is. But if I didn't, you know, I could use one of these existing tools. This is great if I know exactly what I'm looking for but I just really want to explore you know, a few different directions. So I'm going to use the brand new generative recolor. This is really powerful because I can describe a feeling, a mood, a theme that I really want to invoke for my color palette. In this case, we have our boba flavors. So I'm gonna put in passion fruit mango. There we go, I'll let that generate and we'll take a look at a few of the different variations that we get back here. All right, there we go. Let's take a look at a few of these. All right, this one's all right. I like this one a little bit better, but again, it gets me part of the way there. It's not perfect, but it really is great because I can go into advanced options, I can edit this even further, and then when I love it, I'll save it as a new color group and I can use it throughout the rest of my design. So really quickly, I can start to explore so many different directions. Just like in Photoshop, I have my contextual bar, which I'm really familiar with, and I can create generations from here. With text to vector, I can create subjects, scenes, icons, and patterns. I'm gonna go ahead and just get started with creating an icon. I'll type in airplane and let that generate. Now, icons, very minimal objects. I have very simple lines here. Uh, we'll get that back, and again, I'll get a few variations. Wow, okay, just like that, I just got a few different versions of an airplane back. Let's take a look at a few of these variations. Eh, okay, eh, which one do I, I like this one, I like this one. The thing is, this is Illustrator, right? So this is completely vector. Yes, I can go in, I can tweak this even further. Let me just adjust this anchor point. Again, all of this is something that I can manipulate, that was a little much. I'll bring this down a little bit. And again, this is just a great starting place for me within my workflows. But let's be honest, that's a little simple. This is just an icon. Let's move on to something a bit more complex. So I wanna create a subject here. I'll go ahead and switch this over to subject and I'll type in a tiger face minimal flat. 
Now again, not just describing a basic tiger, I add all these extra words to really beef up my prompt here, minimal and flat, because I really want to describe that style. Wow, <laughs> unbelievable. So I have a few, again, variations, yes, <laughs> of this tiger. These are all so good. It's so hard to pick. Okay, well, I really like this one. Let's just take a really close look. Again, fully vector. These lines are really clean. So this is a really great starting place for me within my workflows. Uh, but I do want to explore you know, a few more directions for this tiger. So let's go back in. I'm going to switch this to a colorful kawaii tiger. And just by changing you know, a few words, I really am looking for something a little cuter, a little bit more approachable. I added that kawaii word in there. Oh my god, <laughs> adorable. This is perfect. Uh, I'll also open this up so I can look again at the panel and see all of my options here. Uh, I mean, the first one's pretty good. I don't know if we're going to beat that. Pretty sure we are. I'm going to stick with that one here. Uh, but in just a few seconds, right, I went from something like this to this. Um, unlike subject, where I kind of got that transparent background, we see it loading over in the variations. All of that is coming through. Amazing. Here we go. Full, full landscapes really, really quickly. All right, I like this second one. <laughs> yeah, there are so many possibilities. You could type in like a fantastical forest, a beach, but this looks really good. But here's the thing. Sometimes I have my own artwork uh, that I'm creating, and I really want this to match the style. So I have here on the right-hand side a piece of artwork that I've created, and it's really hard sometimes for me to put into words exactly how I would describe my own artwork to put that into a prompt. So the great thing is I don't have to do that. Instead, I'm going to use the brand new style picker, select my own artwork, click generate, and what this is going to do is it's going to pull all of those colors that I've used. It's going to look at my style. It's going to add that to this generation, all of that prompt. We see that loading in. I'm going to take a look at this with you. Yes, for the first time. <laughs> Amazing. This is so, so powerful. I love this one here. This tool is unbelievable. Type in space planets. Why not? It's my favorite. And of course, since this is Illustrator, you know it's going to be vector. We're going to get a repeatable pattern, something I can use, again, really quickly. Amazing, love this one. Even better. <laughs> I can go in, I can edit this even further. Let's look at this. Of course, it is fully vector. I can add, remove objects. Let's just delete a few of these here. And since this is repeatable, it just repeated that across my entire swatch 